Yes, my name is uh, Martin Biagel. I work with uh, Disaster Waste Recovery, which is a non-for-profit that works very much after disasters and conflicts. We do uh, debris uh, cleanup, we do demolition of damaged buildings, and also solid waste management with recycling. So Disaster Waste Recovery, uh, being a non-for-profit, we work a lot in countries that have been affected by earthquakes or by hurricanes. Um, as well as after conflict, so like Syria or Kosovo or currently in northeast Nigeria. Um, we uh, operate as uh, both training uh, local engineers in how to do demolition and how to do safe demolition, also recycling of all the demolition waste. And then sometimes we have the funding to uh, bring in the material uh, and equipment like excavators and crushers to actually carry out the demolition ourselves and then to recycle the materials into the reconstruction process. So uh, we've been going now since 2006 and we operate in many different countries around the world uh, uh, and have just uh, started actually with uh, northeast Nigeria where Boko Haram have uh, created a, a, a lot of damage. So there, there's, it's, it's very different to work in these environments compared to, let's say, the peacetime environment. Um, if you are working in a post-earthquake situation, you have a lot of damaged buildings that are posing a threat to both the public and the workers because you need to do a lot of structural integrity to find out how will the building react when you start demolishing parts of it. Uh, so structural integrity and structural engineers are very important from a safety point of view. Uh, if it's post-conflict, one of the main safety issues is unexploded ordnance and uh, ammunition that hasn't actually detonated on impact. And approximately 10% of all ammunition used doesn't detonate. So you have a high volume of potential ammunition within the debris and the demolition. So we work very closely with the demining companies to ensure that the area is safe. But you can only ever take out some of it, you will never get all of it. So demolition contractors working in this field need to understand those risks of potential unexploded ordnance. You also have a lot of issues with, um, with the, the legal ownership of a building being demolished, so making sure that you have the authority to do that work. It's not the contractor's decision, but we have had cases where demolition contractors are working and an owner turns up and goes, I did not give permission for my building to be demolished. Uh, uh, so how do you deal with that? Um, and then there's other aspects such as how to get insurance to work in these areas. What is the financial model? Will, how will you get paid for working in some of these difficult areas? Um, and then there is the whole plant and machinery, maintenance. You're working in often very difficult areas. All your fuel, your lubrication, your maintenance, your spare parts, a lot of that has to come with you as well. So there's some key challenges there, but it's doable. Uh, we have in Kosovo and Bosnia in the past had demolition contractors working from Europe in those areas. I know that Haiti has American demolition contractors working uh, and I think in places like Syria there will also be European demolition contractors very much working there. Well, th there's different ways of, of collaborating. Um, we have in the past had demolition contractors send individual demolition engineers as just the personnel with technical expertise. So for example in Nepal we had demolition expertise sent by a UK contractor and that person was able to do training in Nepal of other engineers to become safe demolition engineers. Another way of collaborating is to send plant and machinery that is not being used currently. So for six to twelve months we will need excavators, we will need crushers in many places. Um, but also there is an opportunity for demolition contractors to be prepared for the large-scale contracts that the likes of the World Bank, the EU, the UN, they have big funding to actually do the demolition and they need uh, contractors with experience to deploy. Now you wouldn't find a European demolition contractor 
being deployed as a team, you would often find one or two people from that contractor going with maybe some specialized equipment under a contract of one to two years to work with a local contractor and provide that service. So there's lots of different ways that the contractors can, can collaborate. Um, and it all depends on the home market, on their appetite to go and work, and, and potentially also some donation, along with some contracted financial funding as well. So yeah, different ways of doing that.